This video is my first look at the 2023 Niner RKT9 RDO. Now they did come out with this bike in 2022, but I just got it. And this is a first look video that I've anticipated for a really long time. I ordered this bike over a year ago and because of supply constraints and all that, I just got it. And I've really been anticipating this bike. So this is my third RKT9 RDO, but this one has some changes that we're gonna talk about in this video. Now. My first look videos, I really just talk about the bike. I show the components. I don't really go much into the ride quality. Usually I have not ridden a bike in my first look videos. Now in this case, I built it up a couple days ago. Yesterday was Saturday and I couldn't wait. And I did a four hour ride. <laughs> it rides so good, but I typically don't go into the ride quality in these videos. So I'm gonna refrain, use a lot of self-discipline. It's good. All right, so this bike is the new RKT9, and here are the changes that they made from the older models. First of all, the frame has 100 millimeters of travel, up from 90. They've also changed the leverage ratio so that there's more support in the mid-stroke. It's still small bump sensitive, just like the other RKT9s, but you've got a leverage ratio that allows for, again, that pedaling platform where when it starts to get into its travel, it doesn't sink down into this travel as much and so you've got a firmer pedaling platform and combine that with Niner CVA and this bike pedals really well. Now I mentioned before, Niner CVA is one of my favorite suspension designs because when you push hard on the pedals, it's a firm pedaling platform, but yet when you hit a bump, it opens up and is very plush. And so again, I, I like that style of pedaling platform. Also, this frame does support the SRAM universal derailleur hanger. This bike now has a 68 and a half degree head angle with a 100 millimeter travel fork. It used to be 71, so that's a big change, a very, very welcome change. And it has a 75 degree seat tube angle, again, with a 100 millimeter travel fork, which I'll talk about here in a minute because I'm running a 120 and I'll tell you why I chose the 120. This bike also has a flip chip, so you can change the geometry and you can slacken it out about, I think it's 0.4 degrees. And so you can make this bike a little bit more trail focused. It also has a new chain stay protector. So Niner has gone with the kind of chain stay protector that has the ridges, which keeps the chain more quiet. Another very welcome change is this bike has a threaded bottom bracket. The previous RKT9 RDOs had a press fit. And so for those of you who are home mechanics, you'll really appreciate that. Every bottom bracket will creak and you gotta grease it, and the threaded ones are a lot easier to work on. This bike allows for 2.5 inch tire clearance, and so again, you can make this bike a bit more trail focused if you wanted to add some bigger tires. And the rear brake caliper is inside the frame, so it not only looks good, but also protects it. So as I mentioned, I went with the 124. When I first ordered this bike, I ordered it with the 120, and then I called Niner up and I said, listen, I know the bike's on back order. Can you change my order to a 100? I just wanna have a little bit more distance between my downcountry bike. And then I rode a bike with a 110 fork, and I was surprised that I could really tell a difference. It felt a bit more harsh, and so I called Niner back up. I said, hey, let's change it to a 120. Now, there are a few reasons why. First of all, I feel smoother and faster with a 120 fork. A lot of cross country bikes today are going with a 120 fork and I just prefer it. I ride in an area that has a lot of roots and I can just ride smoother over those roots with a 120 fork. The other reason is because it's going to help with pedal strikes. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna run this bike in the high setting and that is going to raise the bottom bracket. If I were to use a 100 fork, I would probably put it in the low setting, but with a 120 fork, it slackens the head angle out. So not only is the bottom bracket higher in the high setting, but the bottom bracket's also higher with a 120 fork. I can't stand pedal strikes. And so by running the 120 fork, those two things are going to reduce the pedal strikes. So this bike is the four star build, which has Shimano XT, and I'm so glad Niner has provided the option for Shimano components. All of the mountain bikes that I've had over the past several years have been SRAM just because that was the only option available. So again, I'm stoked to be back on Shimano, mainly because of the brakes. I love Shimano brakes. I love the fact that they use mineral oil. They're easier to work on. I don't have to worry about 
getting mineral oil on my hands or on the bike because mineral, uh, DOT fluid is corrosive, it's toxic. Uh, love the, the mineral oil. I also like the fact that these brakes are more uh, grabby in the initial bite. There's less pressure involved when initiating the braking. They don't have quite the modulation of SRAM, but I, I do like that initial bite that Shimano has. I, I just like Shimano. And my kind of summary is that SRAM is a little bit more innovative, but Shimano has the edge in performance. My opinion, I know that people may differ in that opinion, but uh, that's why I like Shimano. So again, so glad that I was able to have the option for Shimano components. With that, let's take a look at some of the other components on this bike. I'll start with the cockpit. One really nice thing that Niner has done is they're using shorter stems. So this bike has a 60 millimeter stem. My previous RKT9 had, I think it was 85 or 90, which was fine, but I have gotten used to shorter stems and super glad that Niner has included a shorter stem. It has a carbon bar, a flat bar. Also on my previous Niner was a 760 bar. This one is now a 780, which I am really glad because my trail bikes have either a 780 or a 100, and it's just less of a transition going from trail bikes to this bike with a wider bar. And I just, I, I also like the handling of a wider handlebar. I did put on my own ESI grips, so it does come with Niners, really nice lock on grips. I'm just used to these foam grips. So these are the ESI chunky foam grips. The saddle is a Sella Italia saddle. If you look on Niner's website, it actually shows it coming with a Niner saddle, but this is one of the two specs that are different than what you'll see on the website because of supply issues. But this is a really nice saddle. And from my ride yesterday, I can say it's really comfortable. It also comes with the Niner RDO seat post. It's a carbon seat post. These seat posts are built with a bit of flex. Really nice seat post, uh, super light seat post. Now, of course, it is a rigid seat post. You do have the option on the frame to put a dropper post. So that's your port and there are channels inside the frame. And speaking of that, I will say that this bike was so easy to build up. So inside the frame are channels for the cables. For example, the rear derailleur, I just fed in from the back. It popped out right there. You run it through this guide and that's actually new too. So uh, this little, I think Niner calls it a wicket, but this little guide that the cable can go through and then it goes back into the frame and then it just pops out. So you're not fishing cables. You're not fishing inner wire. And listen, if you have built up bikes in the past where you had to fish a wire through the frame, this was so easy. I mean, you just feed it through, it pops out. All the cables were like that. So kudos to Niner for making these bikes so easy to build up. For gearing, you've got a Shimano 10 to 51 12 speed cassette. Of course, an XT derailleur with a clutch. In the front, you've got a 32 tooth front chain ring. It's a race face carbon crank set. Really, really nice crank set. These crank arms are 175. Again, the reason I like the 124 because with 175 crank arms versus like 170s, you have uh, more opportunity for pedal strike. So that's why I am glad I went with the 120. This bike came with Stan's Arch S1 wheels. It's an alloy wheel set. Now, if you look on the website, this is the other spec that is different. It says it comes with DT Swiss 1700s. They're about the same weight. The DT Swiss, I looked online and they're about 55 grams lighter for the set. So this is a change, but I'm actually glad because I love working on Stan's hubs. They are so easy to work on. Now, this is a spec. So this bike is $6,700 for the four star build. And this is about the price range where you'll see some bikes come with carbon wheels and some come with alloy. Usually the bigger brands that have their house brand carbon wheels will include bikes with carbon wheels at this price point. It, you know, it's, it's a bit forgivable for me because things have gotten so insanely expensive. Now bikes that are around $8,000 plus should come with carbon wheels. And I mentioned that as a complaint when I'm reviewing the demo, the Lee Coogan 428, which is a great bike. I just wish it came with carbon wheels. I will be putting on a Stan's podium wheel set on this bike. The ones that I need are back ordered right now. So 
I'll be running these, which is going to make for a cool video because I'll talk about, you know, after riding these for a month or two, what it's like to switch over to carbon. Now, I will say, I was super impressed with the feel of these on my ride yesterday, these arch wheels. I was expecting a, a ride that wasn't quite as stiff, but the arch wheels are, for an alloy wheel set, they have really good lateral stiffness. And so I won't talk much more about that until I talk about the ride review, but I, I will say that these wheels really impressed me on the trail. So this is the first set of Schwabby tires that I've used in a really long time. So you've got a racing Ralph on the back and you've got a racing Ray on the front. I'm kind of stoked about trying these because I've been using Maxxis tires for a long time. Before I talk about the suspension, one thing that I also want to mention about the frame that's new is you've got some bosses on the top for a bento box. So if you do marathon style events and you want to have a bento box to grab a bar, a gel, keep a tube in there, whatever, you've now got that option. You do also have some bosses underneath for uh, putting a water bottle under the down tube. Not my thing, but if you wanted to put another water bottle in this frame, because you can only run one inside the triangle, then you could put one underneath the frame. Finally, let's talk about the suspension. So like I said, this is a 120. It's a Fox 34 step cast. To me, this is the perfect cross country fork. It is light. It's the same weight as the 100. It's just got a different air shaft. And I believe I can change out the air shaft to make it a 110 or a 100 if I wanted to, but I will most certainly keep it as a 120. I just like the way they feel. So this is the factory version, which comes with the Kashima coating. This one does not have a remote lockout, which I'm glad about. And I love the, the glossy color on the fork, which really complements the frame. So I didn't really mention that when I talked about the frame, but the paint job on this is, is great. I love the minimal graphics. Uh, it also comes in kind of a red candy apple carbon color, but I like this black and I love clear coat frames. You can just easily clean them. And then it does come with a Fox float rear shock, a Fox float DPS. It does have a remote lockout. And I've mentioned before that I actually prefer not having a remote, remote lockout simply because it's just one more maintenance thing. It probably took me an extra 10 to 15 minutes when I built this bike up. When I do the air sleeve maintenance on the shock, I will most likely have to disconnect the cable. That's why I just don't like having it. However, I'm gonna have an open mind about it and use it. And I may come back in a few months from now and just say, hey, I, I love having this. So this is your lockout. So, you know, that's, that's locked out. And then if you wanna unlock it, you just pop that. So, you know, hardtail, full suspension. Hardtail, full suspension. So yeah, you know, listen, a lot of people love them and they're great for like, if you're starting off a race and you just wanna have the rear suspension locked out for the initial start, or you just come out on a pave segment, you don't wanna reach down and try to unlock the shock or lock it. It's, it's probably gonna be useful. I just, you know, I'm, I'm a minimalist when it comes to maintenance. I like things as quick and easy as possible, but um, it is what it is and I'm gonna use it and I'll let you know if I like it. So this is the flip chip that changes the geometry. And I did change it yesterday because it came in the low setting and it is the easiest flip chip that I've ever changed. So all you do is remove the lower shock bolt, flip the chips around, put the shock bolt back in. You don't even really have to remove the rear tire. It's probably easier if you did, but you don't have to. It's super quick. I mean, it takes like a minute or two um, and just torque it back up to 12 newton meters and you're ready to roll with a different geometry. As you can tell, my level of enthusiasm for this bike is very high because the cross country bike is the bike I ride the most often because of where I live. The trails are pure cross country and it's the bike I have the most fun on on these trails. Now, when I go to the mountains, I have more fun on my trail bikes, but uh, it's having the right tool for the job. So any questions or comments that you have about this bike, drop those below. If you've ridden one of these, one of the newer ones, let us know what your thoughts are about the bike. And if this video was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up for me. It helps out my channel. Catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.